This is actually going to be kind of a quick one for you guys today because I'm actually in the middle of final exams at uni, but I'm going to do a much more detailed systems design and architecture video coming up soon where it's not just me yapping while playing a video game, okay? We're going to bust out the diagrams, we're going to do all sorts of fun stuff, so stick around if you're interested for that. But today I just wanted to briefly talk about a topic that I think is really important in system design, and that's the idea of a problem space. You can actually take this outside of just system design and apply it to pretty much all parts of engineering. But today I'm just gonna focus on its application in software, hardware, and computer systems. So what is a problem space and why would you even care? I'm gonna start us off with a question. So the question is, when you're designing a system, why are you designing that system, right? Like what's the point in designing that system? It doesn't matter what the system is. It could be a web system, like a web app or something like that. It could be a server. It could be an embedded system. It could be a hardware circuit. It could be any kind of, any kind of thing. The, the point is, why are you designing that system? And the vast majority of the time, the system is going to be designed in order to solve a particular problem, right? Or meet a particular purpose or do something in particular. So why the system is being designed, usually it's to do something or to solve a problem. And so the problem space, when you talk about systems design, is all of the context that's required to make up the problem. So what I mean by that is, if I've got a problem, what are the components that make up that problem? And how do I design the components of my solution to meet the needs of those problems? It's a bit of abstract, so I'm gonna start us off with an example on a pretty low level of abstraction. And I wanna get into abstraction uh, layers a little bit because I think that's really important for mindset. So let's just say I'm a software engineer and I've been tasked to work on a pre-existing software component and I'm fixing a very simple bug, something like this. We'll start off with this. So essentially what we're on now is a pretty low level of abstraction. So I'm at the code level of the system. So my problem space is essentially what are the components that go into making up this bug, right? So what's the symptom of the bug? Like what does the bug actually do? Where in the software system does this occur? What leads to it occurring? Like what are the preconditions for this to actually happen? And so I have to load all of that context into my head in order to figure out exactly where the bug is and go into the system and fix it. Let's say I'm building out a feature in the same program. My problem space is now, what are the requirements of the assigner, right? So I've been given a feature that I'm supposed to implement. What are the requirements? So what is this feature actually supposed to do? What are the performance requirements that they want? Um, then I'm thinking on the code level, what are the data structures I'm gonna to use to implement this? You know, what are the libraries I'm gonna use maybe? How do I build out my functions correctly? How do I split up my code? So we're thinking on a pretty low level of abstraction. I wanna swap gears for a minute and say, let's go and design a web app. So immediately, if I'm saying I wanna design a web app, by expanding the scope like that, we actually have to change the level of abstraction that we're thinking about when we're designing this particular thing. So now instead of thinking about the code that goes into the web app, I'm directly immediately thinking, okay, web app, the components that make that up are a database, uh, a web server, you know, we're gonna have an API, we might have a front end that we need to build out that grabs information from the back end and things like that. What you'll notice is that even though we've gone up to a higher level of abstraction, eventually we will still have to encompass the low level of abstraction as well. So as I'm designing and building this web app, I'm still going to have features I need to implement. I'm still gonna have bugs I need to fix. So I still have to care about the low level of abstraction. And if I'm going into a software system, we'll go back to the first example where I'm on the code level here. When I'm writing my code, I have to think about how that fits into the overall system as well on a much higher level. Because if I'm writing a whole bunch of code that doesn't integrate well or kind of does its own thing or maybe redoes something that's already done, that's not necessarily great practice. So the point is, in my opinion for systems design, what's really helped me, and I'm still pretty uh, early on in my career, so I'm interested to see how my mindset changes when I get more experience. But what's really helped me is the ability to think on multiple levels of abstraction as I'm working on something. So for example, if I'm working on um, like designing the web app, I can think, I can start thinking, so I've got my, you know, I've got the database that I wanna use. I've got the sort of API that I wanna use. Um, what backend framework do I wanna use? Django, well, if I'm using Django, then I'm gonna be using Python. And 
I know that there's a great REST API library for that, so I could use REST APIs, right? And then if I'm actually writing out the code, I have to think about how that fits in with my system overall. I'll give you another example. So I mentioned in a previous video that I'm involved with an embedded systems course at my university. And one of the biggest fundamental re reoccurring issues I see students have is failure to grasp the problem space. And essentially what I mean by that is they, a lot of the time, and I don't blame them for this, because I don't think that university assignments that they've done up to this course really prepare them for this kind of problem solving. Um, but the, the issue is tunnel vision. So they'll pick one component of the embedded system. We'll give them a whole bunch of requirements um, and we'll say, you've got to do this and you've got to do this and you've got to do this. And an embedded system is made up of a lot of different components. There's like hardware components, there's software components. And then within those components, there's components. Um, so you really have to be thinking about your system design as you go and implement each component, because especially on embedded systems, every component has to tightly interact because a lot of the time your MCU is not all that powerful. So I had an example where I saw some students who, for example, were using an LCD, right? And so one person nominated themselves and said, okay, I'm going to work on the LCD display, which is fine because you want to split up the workload up like that. But then they got tunnel vision. So a lot of the time they used SPI as their communication method with the LCD. So if I'm thinking on multiple levels of abstraction when I'm designing my uh, system and when I'm implementing the code for this LCD, I'm thinking to myself, okay, so I'm going to need to use the SPI bus. Are there any other components that work together to solve the overall problem of we need to build this project that I need to think about when I'm using the SPI bus? Because if there are other components, I don't necessarily want to hog the SPI bus all the time. Because even though my component might work really, really well, I'm still not actually solving the overall issue because I've only met one component in the problem space, right? Like I've just got the LCD. I don't have the other components of the project working. So if I was thinking on the higher level of abstraction, exactly. I'm thinking, okay, I've got this LCD on SPI. What other components are on SPI that I need to worry about? And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, is this idea of the problem space. You want to be able to load the context into your head for the problem that you're trying to solve. And then for each component of that problem, how are you going to design a solution? And for each part of that solution, you want to be able to think about the layers of your design. So when you're coding, you want to think about how this is going to fit into the overall design of the code uh, or, or the system as a whole. Um, if you are designing, you know, like you're doing the high level design, you want to think, okay, would this actually be feasible to implement in code? Like how difficult is this going to be? Because I can come up with a fantastic architecture that's super crazy and it would be awesome and so great. But when it actually comes to coding it out and doing the implementation, it's an absolute nightmare because it's so complicated. So it's important that no matter what level of abstraction you're thinking on when you're designing the system, you've got to consider everything else as well and sort of find that middle ground. So for me at least, like I mentioned, I find working on the, um, you know, being able to swap between those layers of abstraction really helpful. But yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see how my mindset on this changes as I get more experience. So if you've got any comments about this topic, I'd really love to hear about them. Cheers.